Roger Agilia, there is no known aircraft in your vicinity. It was a clear Saturday night when Flight Services Officer Steve Roby became the last person to have any contact with a young pilot by the name of Frederick Valentich. speeds two, three times. I could not identify. I personally don't think that uh, he fabricated the, his disappearance. Like many, Valentich's family, particularly his father Guido, believe he was taken by something from another world. I still stay, uh, believe that he was involved with a, an extraterrestrial. UFO expert Paul Norman investigated Frederick Valentich's disappearance. His verdict? Definitely a close encounter of the first kind. As far as I'm concerned, it was a genuine uh, UFO. To this day, no trace has been found of him or his plane. Why not? Can someone simply disappear off the face of the earth? It was three days before that fateful night that Valentich started down the road that would end in his destruction. On October 18, 1978, a young civil pilot went to Melbourne's Moorabbin Airport trying to hire a plane. G'day. G'day. I'd like to hire a plane to fly to King Island. The weather's closing in at best rate. It's too dangerous to fly there today. I've flown in bad weather many times before. Three days later, he was back. The weather was fine, and Frederick Valentich got the OK to fly to King Island. When VHDSJ was cleared for takeoff, all was normal, except for one thing. Valentich had not alerted anyone on King Island that he was coming. No one called, so there was no one there to turn on the landing lights. If anyone should have known a light plane was on its way to King Island, it was Brian Jones. As flight service supervisor, it was his job to light the runway for incoming night traffic. I remember the day quite well. It was a, a Caulfield Cup day, and I've been playing golf. Brian, phone call. When I got a phone call to say that an aircraft was missing across Bass Strait, which was Delta Sierra Juliet, the Cessna 172. It should have been a routine 69-minute flight from the Rabbin, along the coast to Cape Otway, out over Bass Strait and on to King Island. But as the drama was unfolding in the night sky, other strange events were about to unfold on the ground. On that night, I decided I'd go up in the, uh, the area outside the uh, hut and take the, uh, the sun setting in the, in the beautiful end of the west. Oh, I took a series of photographs about six in, in all, at around about 15, 20 second intervals. And, uh, and that was it. Roy Manifold never saw or heard the mysterious object he caught on film. He could not explain the image he'd captured, and nor could Kodak. They come back and they said, oh, there's definitely not a, a developing error. It's nothing to do with the, uh, the film or the development of the film on the print, but they couldn't explain what it was and why it was there. Paul Norman had no doubts what was on the film. He sent the photos to the laboratories of Ground Saucer Watch in America. What they discovered was a solid, metallic object, about seven metres in diameter, about two kilometres out to sea. It was an unknown object uh, rising from the uh, water, and it had a lot of mist around it, uh, indicating it did come from the water. After takeoff, all was normal for a while. Valentich made routine contact with air traffic control at Tullamarine. It was 19 minutes past six. The weather was good, visibility excellent, with scattered clouds and light winds. Then came the concerned call. It was to be the last conversation Frederick Valentich ever had. Melbourne Delta Sierra Juliet is not an aircraft, it is... Delta Sierra Juliet, Melbourne, can you describe the aircraft? Delta Sierra Juliet, as it's flying past, it's a long shape. Few people have ever heard these words. The exact words uttered by Frederick Valentich in his last call to air traffic control. Melbourne, it's approaching now from due east towards me. Delta Sierra Juliet, Melbourne. Delta Sierra Juliet, he seems to be playing some sort of game. He's flying over me at speeds two, three times. I could 
not identify. Delta Sierra Juliet, Roger, and how large would the uh, object be? Delta Sierra Juliet, Melbourne. It seems like it's stationary. What I'm doing right now is orbiting, and the thing is just orbiting on top of me. On King Island, life was going on as normal. But some did report strange lights in the sky, as did scores of others on the Victorian mainland. There were more uh, daytime sightings reported on that same day than any period of activity I've ever investigated. In my mind, knowing my son, I was sure that he was encountered something very seriously because he would never go on that radio and compromise his future career as a young pilot. It is hovering and it is not an aircraft. Delta Sierra Juliet. Delta Sierra Juliet, Melbourne. Delta Sierra Juliet, Melbourne. Delta Sierra Juliet. Delta Sierra Juliet, Melbourne. At 7, 12 and 28 seconds, those were Frederick Valentich's last words. Then a long and loud metallic sound. The engine had the characteristics, for example, electromagnetic effect. Frederick Valentich was never heard from again. At this moment, he simply vanished. When Brian Jones was finally alerted, it was already too late. A distress phase had been raised on the aircraft and they wanted uh, me to get out to the airport here, uh, turn on the runway lights and start calling the aeroplane. Delta Sierra Julie, this is King Island. If you're reading me and cannot transmit, I'll give you the service conditions. The wind is calm. QNH 1028, sky clear, runway lights are on, and no traffic for your descent. We took off and we flew due north to Cape Wickham Lighthouse, which is the northern tip of the island. It was an unreal night. It was uh, uh, kind of strange for this t uh, part of the world. There was no wind. And when we got out to sea, just north of Wickham Lighthouse, you could actually see the reflection of the stars in the water. Jones's plane was the first to search in the area. Over the next four days, it was joined by civilian and military aircraft, including an RAAF Orion, which has special sensors for tracking metal in water. But not a trace of Valentich or his plane were found. The fact so far, Valentich was flying a single-engine Cessna alone on a clear, still night. There was no other aircraft known to be in the area. Numerous people reported seeing strange lights in the sky all around the Victorian coast. Roy Manifold captures something on film that to this day has not been explained. And Frederick Valentich reports being buzzed by a mysterious flying craft. Good morning, sir. I'm after Mr. Valentich. That's me. Mr. Valentich, can you tell us where your son is, thanks? No, he's supposed to come back from King Island last night. The worst thing that might happen to him uh, would have been being abducted by uh, some unknowing civilization and uh, that possibly will take we don't know how many years before we'll be able to see him again. I, I, I don't feel that he, he staged his disappearance. Uh, I'm quite open on it. I'm, uh, uh, I, 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 really, uh, I really don't know. Possibly went on a, could be a suicide mission. And it was a real encounter with an unknown flying object. Valentich's girlfriend, Rhonda Rushton, had flown with him on every flight except his last. In a strange postscript to this story, Rhonda travelled to this motel for a rendezvous planned before his disappearance. The motel manager claims Rhonda asked for Valentich and when told he wasn't there, seemed visibly upset. This was seven days after his last fateful radio call. Isn't he the young lad that went missing over Had she street? finally come to grips with the fact that his disappearance was not a hoax? To this day, this event remains unexplained, as does the disappearance of Frederick Valentich. <laughs>